you go just about anywhere, you'll see this. People locked in on their screens. It's happening inside our houses, too, especially with kids and video games. And researchers are finding it's creating an epidemic with dire consequences. In fact, this week, the World Health Organization is expected to officially classify gaming disorder as a disease. Eyewitness News anchor John Paul met two families forever changed who desperately want you to learn from their experience. I was just by myself. There was a time uh, when Adam Brooker would not have wanted to like sit down for this know, interview because he would like rather have been sitting in front of a laptop playing games. Realistically, the video games are a drug. It got so bad when he was a freshman at NC State, he started failing classes. There was a week where I just didn't even go to class and I was just playing video games just all day. All day. And that's when I, that week is when I realized that like something was wrong. He ended up dropping out, told his family he needed help. We're not playing Pac Man anymore. We're playing very immersive games. His and mom, Melanie, so is a nurse. Saying, she that, knew something was wrong and started researching realized gaming and screen addiction was a very real problem. In fact, just last year, the World Health Organization talked about declaring gaming disorder a disease. They'll make that decision this week. The way you describe it, it sounds like an epidemic. Yeah, I believe it is an epidemic. I believe this affects at least one child in every home in our country. And maybe one of the first homes ever impacted was Liz Woolley's. In the early 2000s, her son, Sean, started playing the online game EverQuest. Within like three months, he quit his job hmm. and he started playing this game morning, noon, and night. He just became antisocial and depressed. And I'm watching him like, you this know. This is not the Sean that you knew. No, he was becoming a different person. And he spiraled out of control after shutting out his family so he could game more. Sean made a decision that haunts his mother to this day. I went to um, get him on Thanksgiving and I found him in his apartment and he had killed himself in front of the computer with the game on it. News of her son's suicide went around the world. She began hearing from other families battling video game addiction. So she started Online Gamers Anonymous, a group to help players and their families. Both Liz and Adam have some advice for you. Just a simple test. If your child has a meltdown when you turn off their game or take away their screen, they might have a problem. And the longer it goes on, the bigger the chance for a mental health issue. Depression's just like an automatic, pretty much. Like once you are addicted to games, it's, I mean, you just lose everything that like makes you human. Both families suggest a detox. Take the screens away, cold turkey, for a period of time. That's what worked for Adam. He quit gaming and joined the Army. But Liz's son never got help. She's now dedicated her life to preventing other families from experiencing her pain. More and more people are realizing that this is turning into a problem because of how our society is turning out. John Paul, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. Now, Adam's mother started a group in Charlotte called Families Managing Media, and they hold seminars and bring in experts from all around the country. We have a list of resources and links to the groups mentioned in John's report posted on our WSOC News app.